Hi, I'm a self-taught developer too. And tech doesn't care how you got here. The important thing is that you are here now. So say hi in the comments below and you'll understand why later on. It isn't the easiest route, but all paths have their challenges. If you want to get into tech and are willing to learn, then you can do this. I think the advantage of being a self-taught developer is that you're forced to engage with the community sooner. It could be learning in public, joining communities, getting into open source, taking part in Twitter spaces, and so many more. All of these will help you stand out from the crowd and grow your network. And you need to stand out from the crowd because there is a big crowd and you can easily stand out. You have something unique and you just need to share your journey. When you learn something new, just share a tip on Twitter. For example, why should someone hiring pick you? It's difficult to explain to a hiring manager. So don't explain it, show them. Show them what you can do, from your tech skills to how you collaborate and communicate with people. That way, companies will come to you. Forget about three or five stage interviews. What about just having an informal chat? Sounds much easier, right? This does happen to people. It can also happen to you. Want a remote job from the US, UK or Europe? It's definitely possible. I see it happening all the time. And we're gonna share some exciting stories in January as well. As with everything, don't just do this when you're looking for a job because that is obvious and won't really benefit you. Be consistent, do it little and often, yes little and often. Well, as often as you can. Sometimes this might be daily, some other times this might be weekly, and that is totally fine. If you've only got 15 minutes that day, then try and read some tweets and try and give your feedback on them. Anything like that, think bite-sized and small. Don't worry too much about what the latest library or framework is that you must learn. Once you've learned your first tool and a specific technology, it's so much easier to pick up others. All these tools and libraries and Trending topics will change. Even learning other technologies becomes easier. That's why people say your first coding language is the hardest to learn. But after that, it gets much easier to do your second, third, fourth. You see where I'm going with this and you might even get into double figures. So don't even get worried about what language to learn. It'll probably change in the future anyway. So start learning your first language. A for loop, a while loop, a switch statement are the same in most languages. Pick the coding language that makes sense to you. And this might make sense because your friend's learning it or your friend's more experienced in it or you've joined a community where everyone's really friendly. Or when you look at language A versus language B or C, it kind of makes more sense and that is fine. Pick those languages first. Definitely join multiple communities. It's a great way to get support and encouragement to make sure you keep learning and hold you a little bit accountable if that's what you need and want. Remember to start off small. I see people trying to run. Actually, I see people trying to fly before they can walk and then get discouraged very quickly and demotivated when they can't progress. Yes, you need to go outside your comfort zone to learn, but keep it balanced. And don't forget to take breaks. Resting is really important. It really helps us focus. I remember being stuck on a problem for so many hours, so many hours. I finally decided to go to sleep. I woke up and I fixed the issue in 10 minutes. I could have saved myself like six hours of stress and pain and probably a good night's sleep as well. So don't forget to have that rest. But do ask for help when you get stuck, but remember to give context. Asking for help is just like any other skill that we need to develop. It takes time to practice and we improve over that time. And you can improve faster by helping other people. Yes, by helping other people, because you will see how they ask questions. And most people don't give enough context or reference. So when you see them do this, you'll think, oh, when I ask my question, I must include that information because I can see it's missing in theirs and you'll understand that it's missing in yours. You see people get faster and better responses and you think, well, why does that happen to them and not me? It's because they ask a better question. So the better your question, the more focused your question, the faster and better response you'll get. Have fun as you work through your tech journey. Remember, it is more about the journey than the actual destination because the destination will probably change as you learn more, as you understand about different roles in tech. There are so many different roles from developer that we're talking about now to DevRel, to technical writer, to business analyst. There are so many more, which would be an entire video itself if I was going to list them all. And you can change. You might spend your first year in one area and realize you don't like that. Or you see someone else doing something, you think that's really exciting. 
I was doing development for over 13 years and in the last two or three years in focusing more on DevRel. I still get to code, I still get to geek out with you amazing people in the community. DevRel for me is more about bridging the gaps between the different communities and different developers and sharing tips and knowledge. And I love that. You can change one year into your career, five, 10, 15, 30 years into your career. There is no boundaries. It's the beauty of tech. We can change whenever we want. Bonus tip, share what you learned recently on Twitter. Tech Twitter is amazing. Your tips will help someone and then they'll follow you and thank you for your tips helping them. If you can do this little and often, as I mentioned before, you will really stand out from the crowds.